Carol Kennedy was a 53-year-old divorcee. She was a mother of two children. Uh, she was an artist. She was an educator. She lives in a somewhat secluded area outside of town, a lot of open land. I just loved Carol immediately. We were very good friends. She was an absolutely beautiful, pure, loving person. July 2nd of 2008, Carol Kennedy was murdered in that house. This all starts that Carol Kennedy's on a phone call with her mother. The next thing you know, the mother hears her say, oh no. And all of a sudden, the call is disconnected. Sheriff's Office, Maria, how can I help you? Mother suspects something's not correct, and she calls 911. I was on the phone with my daughter, and she screamed and said, oh no, and the phone's gone dead. Can you go check? And next thing you know, the police arrive. Somebody looks through the window and sees a dead body on the floor sees blood all over the place. The person who killed her was very upset with her. There's no reason to whack her seven, eight times over the head with a club. It was a horrific crime scene. We knew very little other than the fact that she had been clearly beaten to death. It's horrible, just horrible. I, I mean, I just can't believe a person would be so cruel. My name is Joseph Mora. I'm a private investigator. I was hired by 48 Hours to look into this case. This was a passion, passion crime. This was clearly somebody who knew her, and therefore the suspects are very limited. Thank you to all a good uh -oh. night. <laughs> My brother Steve and Carol were together for about 30 years. They were just crazy in love for each other. Steve was a very successful financial advisor. He had just been promoted to the senior vice president at UBS. So he had a very strong position and a job that he loved. I always had a sense they were both deeply in love with each other and that the marriage had become toxic. Stephen DeMarker puts himself approximately a mile, mile and a half from this exact location the night of the murder. He claims that he went for a bike ride. So obviously, being the ex-husband and uh, putting himself in the area, he becomes a suspect immediately. I want to be cooperative. OK. And, and I'm hoping, like I said, I, I do my best to rule people out. He's the only person that hated her. She was just too good. No one else could do that to her. They already don't believe him. They didn't buy his initial story. They don't buy the alibi of riding a bicycle. They're saying, oh, we got our guy. Steve couldn't do this to anyone, certainly not to Carol, not to the mother of his children. From the defense point of view, the biggest aspect of reasonable doubt in this case is the lack of physical evidence. There was none on his bike. There was none in his car. There was none in his house. There was none in his clothing. There should have been something. As an American, you're entitled to, you're innocent until proven guilty. Boy, we found out that that wasn't true. If you decide that you're going to arrest Steve DeMarco for the murder of his wife without any physical evidence whatsoever, you better have a very strong circumstantial case. They cannot put Steve inside that murder scene. So there's nothing we're gonna find that's gonna tell you that no, I wasn't there, okay? I wouldn't do that, okay? What we do know is the DNA under Carol Kennedy's left fingernails is a complete profile, and it's not Stephen DeMarco.